This week on Maker Update, an open source garden pod, a weird week for 3D printing, weather over Wi-Fi, DIY night vision, measuring tape mods, Wookie treats, a $10,000 maker contest, and maker fairs. It's Wednesday, February 22nd. I'm Donald Bell and welcome to another Maker Update. It's been a good week for me. I got my application in this week for Maker Fair Bay Area. Hopefully they'll accept me and you guys can see me racing in my own custom Maker Project Lab Power Wheels race car. I'll have more details on that soon. Uh, I've also been motivated to wrap up my Alexa Billy Bass project because someone actually wants to buy it off of me and gift it to someone. So that's been very motivating to get that wrapped up. But enough about me. Let's move on to this week's awesome project of the week. Last week, a group of designers called Space 10, who are funded by IKEA as a kind of idea lab, they came up with this space pod looking grow room design. It uses CNC cut plywood and screws, and that's it. The design and the files needed for CNC are all open source. The PDF instructions on GitHub are gorgeous. And as you would imagine from something connected to Ikea, there's a lot of smart interlocking joints that don't require hardware. I showed this to my wife and she wanted nothing to do with it really. I think she just wants the planners, the normal planners that I promised to build her last year and still haven't gotten around to, I'm sorry. But I think it's a cool idea, though it's really meant for more of like a city environment where you're maximizing vertical space. I also really like this idea that Ikeas of the future could be like these local CNC factories that fabricate things like this on site instead of making them overseas and shipping them all over the world. And now for news. Last week, 3D printer manufacturer MakerBot had a round of layoffs. TechCrunch estimates the 30% reduction to mean around 80 to 100 people lost their jobs. It's sad news, and of course, it also leads people to wonder about the popularity and sales of 3D printers. What's telling to me is that the MakerBot CEO, Nadav Goshen, issued a statement saying that the company would focus now on educational and professional markets, and he leaves out any mention of hobbyists and everyday people. It makes sense because the way I see it, the maker hobbyist market has been overwhelmed with better, lower cost options than the maker bots for years now. But still, I can't help feeling like this is sort of embarrassing for the maker movement when one of the biggest name brands launched by our community is withering away. And in more promising 3D printing news, classic car obsessive Jay Leno has a new video out on how 3D printed metal parts are providing a new source for vintage car parts that would otherwise be impossible to find. The process he shows off uses a high-end million-dollar Stratasys laser sintering system that uses different types of powdered metal, including steel, aluminum, and titanium. I just like this idea that old car gearheads are excited about doing short runs of 3D printed metal parts to restore their old cars. It's like one of those fun surprises, like when you realize that model railroad guys are really excited about 3D printing. All right, now for some more projects. Just yesterday, I found yet another cool project from Becky Stern. This one is a great modern looking Wi-Fi weather display that pulls down the local temperature and lights up different colored triangles to represent conditions like clear, cloudy, rain, and snow. The project uses some NeoPixel LEDs, an Adafruit Huzzah board that has an ESP8266 Wi-Fi chip for pulling down data, a four-digit, seven-segmented display for the temperature, a permaproto board, and some basic wiring. Becky puts the whole thing in an inexpensive shadow box and creates the triangles just with some cardboard and scrap paper. It looks like a fun project, and Becky's a real pro at writing these up with every detail you might need. Also, check out this DIY night vision scope by MattGyver92 on Instructables. You'll need to do some 3D printing to pull this off, but the components are actually pretty affordable and straightforward. He uses a $38 mini camera and a $40 LCD to display it on. The key part of this build is that you need to strip the stock IR filter off the camera lens, and Matt does a great job showing you how. Now for a few tips. Over on MakeZine, Gareth Bramwin has collected a great roundup of ways to hack your measuring tape to include a pencil holster for marking as you measure, or even magnetizing the end of your tape measure. On Thingiverse, I noticed a few new stereographic projectors. These are round 3D printed globes with a precise pattern of holes in them 
so that when you attach it to the end of a flashlight, it projects a flat 2D image. It's a crazy idea that could also be a cool thing for lamp design. Through the Cool Tools site, I learned about this $22 metal spatula from a company called BuildTac. It's called the BT30185, and it's designed specifically for removing 3D prints from build plates. You hardcore 3D printers probably know all about this thing already, but it was new to me, and I thought I'd share it. On YouTube, there's a great collection by the Darbin Orvar channel, Laura Kampf, and Get Hands Dirty. Each channel has three separate tips videos that include advice from all three makers, Laura, Lynn, and Chris, and I recommend all three videos and all three channels. And finally, it probably needs no promotion from me, but I loved watching Adam Savage's build of his Wookiee bandolier on Tested. Not only did it open my eyes to the magic of using a metal brake for fabricating boxes, but you get to see Adam Savage screw up and have to recut this beautiful belt of leather and just suck it up. I take no pleasure in Adam's struggle, but it's a nice reminder that screwing up is inevitable and the real skill you hone by doing this stuff for years is how to rebound. Adam also includes some good advice on planning for failure by always ordering more parts than you need and even making extra pieces so that you can just use the elements that came out the best. Contests! This week on the Adafruit blog, I learned about a contest from the Infosys Foundation called their Infi Maker Award that gives out $10,000 cash prizes to 25 makers. The deadline is February 28th. You pitch your project in a 90 second video. It doesn't look like you even need to have a finished project, though I suspect the more viable you make it, the better your chances are. So give it a shot. Maker Fairs, we have two coming up. One is this weekend in Kalispell, Montana. The other is Tuesday the 28th in Ankara, Turkey. It's the first time ever in Ankara, so that's cool. All right, and that's it for this week's show. I'd love it if you could like this video or share it or comment on it or do all of those. That would be super. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, you should subscribe to the channel. That would be great too. And uh, you should check out the show notes that exist now for these videos over on makerprojectlab.com, our homepage, my homepage. Uh, it's got the same stuff that are in the, the show notes here on YouTube, but they're prettier, it's better organized, there's more pictures. You'll like it. All right, makerprojectlab.com. That's it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.